what you are basically. Deep, deep down, far, far in, is simply the fabric and structure of existence itself. to my channel thank you so much for being here thanks for tuning in to my wavelength today and i'm currently in rishikesh india i just got here yesterday um jet lag i don't know her i don't have her i don't think i probably look pretty tired but it is my first morning here waking up in the little ashram that i'm staying at and as you guys know i'm here to do yoga for the next month and I'm sure you hear all the sounds of India <laughs> I have seen so many animals here which makes me so happy I've seen monkeys and cows and boars and freaking cute little chipmunks I've seen so many beautiful people and uh, my heart feels so full like I'm staring outside and there are mountains and it's pretty cold I honestly don't know where to start because I feel like I haven't talked to you in so long just heart to heart i used to film those on my iphone like when i was depressed i feel like i had no one to talk to so i would just whip out my phone and pour my heart out and i miss doing that so i'll probably be doing a lot of that while i'm here let me show you what i'm looking at right outside of this door okay <laughs> my room is pink and green got some watermelon vibes going on um I'm about to go explore. I really want to go and see the Ganga River and have some yummy food. I haven't eaten and I'm so hungry. I'm so hungry. Uh, outfit of the day, don't know what I'm wearing at all. Like this is my mom's shirt and then I'm wearing thrifted turtleneck earrings that I got from a vintage shop, my denim and my docks. It's a really, strange outfit but i really wanted to wear this shirt because it reminds me of my mom and it's really comforting and then i have my boyfriend's bracelet on so yeah <laughs> and then thrifted jacket i'm uploading a lookbook soon it's already up it just has to get approved by the sponsor i'm feeling so much i almost don't even know how i feel right now it's like overwhelmed in a beautiful way i just have no idea what this month is going to hold and I haven't met anyone. I have no friends here yet. I don't feel lonely, surprisingly. Like the deep loneliness hasn't hit me because I know that um, the training starts tomorrow. So I have time to like meet people. I just feel like I really called this in. I really wanted to be independent and go somewhere new, travel alone, have a cultural experience on my own and only have myself to rely on. I'm just so excited. I feel free in my heart. I also haven't posted a video in a while because I've just wanted it to feel really good and organic and I've been trying to find my rhythm with YouTube. I feel like I'm going through a shift of some sort. But basically I have just been doing a lot of growth and feeling so confident and just okay with who I am. Just feeling at a good place with myself it's so weird i don't know when this came about i don't know if it's like as you get older you care less about what people think but i just feel like i'm my friend i've been doing a lot of self-love and i just feel like i'm my best friend and it's a really good feeling i am honestly like goofy as hell i'm weird as hell and i'm ugly and i'm beautiful and i can feel sad and i can feel happy and i can feel everything and all of it is valid and I want to show more of that just the raw unedited not cute moments because that's what's real I have a bunch of interesting video ideas for while I'm here and filming does feel really good I just want to be proud of like what I'm creating also and be excited to post it and not just like oh I'm just posting this because I haven't posted in a while but yeah my heart like I literally don't know where this is coming from but I just feel waves of joy and bliss and surrender and I feel like a lot of people ask me oh how do you get that way like how is someone so happy I don't even believe that you're this happy and I mentioned this a while ago but I feel like because my heart has broken so much in my life and I have felt so much sadness 
my heart cracked open in so many different places and love has like weaved all these cracks together and so now when i'm happy the light and the joy shines into all those dark cracks and places that once felt so lonely felt so much pain and when i'm happy i'm like happy like i'm exuberant and it fills every cell in my being and I feel like most people probably aren't used to that, like seeing someone just like shake and dance and express out of joy. But I just can't help it. Like I feel joy in every cell of my being. I feel lightness in every cell of my being. And um, I mean, what's most authentic to me is to keep just like smiling like an idiot and talking about my joy because bless you. <laughs> I think partially I'm shook like I never thought that I could feel so happy and that's why I talk about it so much I'm like I'm so stable and I'm sure some of you guys are like we get it he told me like you're happy but I just I just never thought that I could feel as light as I do I never thought that I could go for as long as I have without getting anxiety and and so I just can't help but talk about it I can't help but share and I, I want to talk about things that make me feel good and things that I love and um, I think that helps me attract more of those things, but it's also like what's on my mind. Like, wow, I'm feeling so good. And so I just, I just feel to share it. Also just being grateful literally in every point of my life and every moment of my life. I think that's the biggest tip I have for anyone who is questioning how to be happy or how not to like constantly yearn for other things is just expressing gratitude in every moment. I truly feel that there's always, always a reason to be grateful even when, I don't know, shit really hits the fan or you have like negative money in your bank account and you have no job and no friends, you still have your health or you still have the opportunity to rise and grow through your situation. You have a family that loves you and if you don't have that, then you have vision to see the colors in the sky and the flowers in the earth. like. I just feel that even when things are really shitty, one of the best things to do is invoke love and gratitude because <sighs> gratitude completely changes, I feel like, the energetic state of your body. Instead of feeling like you're lacking so much in your life, you feel like you have everything that you need or you're, you're kind of declaring the things that you do have. Um, and then love, I feel like, takes away fear. when. You feel nervous about something like i maybe have felt moments here being nervous to be here i invoke love and remember oh my god i attracted this i wanted this i'm here um to feel this fear and i'm here to feel everything i just invoke love for all beings and for myself and for this earth and all of my fear kind of diminishes and it's not where like i'm repressing my fear but i just like see all the love in the situation and it feels so good and so whatever you're feeling right now i hope that you can take a moment to feel grateful and not force yourself to but feel it like in your heart because that's really the way to get any kind of benefit from it is truly truly deeply feeling grateful like in your heart and your being for everything that you're blessed to receive including i don't know a friend who deceived you or someone who did something wrong to you that made you learn a really valuable lesson in my last yoga teacher training, the teacher shared this story about a man who um, spoke to God and he said, in my next life, I want you to teach me forgiveness. Like, please, I wanna know forgiveness. And so in his human life, he forgot his experience with God. And in his lifetime, he got robbed of everything that he had. He got robbed of all of his money, all of his wealth, and had to learn forgiveness. In the human state, it's hard to see that everything around us, including the suffering, is a lesson. But I really like that story because it's like, oh, what if this is God? What if in some way I asked for this and I'm learning exactly what I need to learn and this is all part of my path and this is God showing himself to me in the form of an ex-friend or in the form of someone who really taught me how to love and forgive and that's how i feel about you know my anxiety and depression like i'm so grateful for it because i really know what's good for me what's bad for me i'm sober i hang out with people who i can be honest with and tell my triggers to and i also know how sensitive i am and how to walk through this world in a way where i can be as mindful as I can with um, my mind. <laughs> I feel like so many people who have struggled with anxiety or depression learn so much about themselves and it truly is a gift. And as soon as you learn how to cope with it better and refine your responses, you can really see like 
how amazing it is to be self-aware through your mental illness. It's getting kind of loud, so I closed the door and I thought that I would do a little room tour. This is the door that I was just <laughs> sitting by and the balcony is out there. This is my bed and I put my own bedding. Those are my own sheets and my own pillowcase. And then this is their blanket that they provided, but pro tip, if you travel anywhere, bring your own sheets because it makes wherever you're staying feel like home. And also it has your own detergent on it, which is I think better for your skin than using like random detergents from other places that you don't know of. In Bali, for example, they use like really strong detergent. I have my yoga mat. This one is great for really hot climates. It's by, I think, I think it's by Yoga Tribe or something like that. I'm just doing the primary series and this is mostly for my own experience. I love Hatha yoga. Hatha I feel like is the basis of most yoga practices and um, it's something that I'm like so in love with, balancing the sun and the moon and has I think made me into the best version of myself and it's something that like I can do every single day and get exactly what I need. And Ashtanga is very different, it's definitely very fiery and um, I learned in my first training that the reason that so many people are into like power yoga or fiery yoga is because instead of fully sitting still with yourself and like not moving and slowing down, you're going really fast and so your your mind is encouraged to continue running or you're distracted because your body is moving so fast but it doesn't give you the same lesson of being able to sit still off of the yoga mat. It doesn't give you that resilient mind that doesn't react to heat and fire in the form of like, I don't know, being around your family or getting anxiety. Like Hatha yoga really taught me how to sit still and not react to literally everything around me. And yeah, I just remember my teacher always talking about how a lot of other kinds of yoga, including like power yoga, is uh, more of a workout and less of a meditation. And you don't get as many of the same lessons that you can just learning how to sit still with yourself. But <laughs> I do see just the beauty and the importance of all yoga that exists. And I don't think one is necessarily better than the other. I think everyone will have their own journey. Um, and will evolve with their practice as they do. Yeah, just dive into this and also I know my Sanskrit will get so much better. I love knowing the Sanskrit poses. I feel like that's a sign of a good yoga teacher is when they actually say the Sanskrit and um, just know, have like a wide range of experiences. So that's what I'm trying to do. Yeah, I just kind of wanted to explain that. Oh my gosh, I seriously want to cry. orientation for my yoga teacher training and I feel so much I feel I am partially an artiste and I I feel very much fueled by having a new project to work on or just like having something to create that's completely my own basically find another doorway that will help me enter into more love another doorway to love basically in whatever form that may be and just reignite my passion and my fire for different kinds of creation and just fucking learn about myself dude learn about what makes me feel good what doesn't what i don't know yeah breaks down those walls and I know that anytime anyone does an intensive like this, like so much will come up. Stuff that you didn't know was there, that's lingering, will rise to the surface. I've been getting so many random childhood memories being here. And I just feel like things are like rising and they will be cleared away. So it's just gonna be an amazing process. I'm feeling good. I've cried twice since being here. I cried, I think this first morning that I was here because I didn't have any 
human contact with anyone that spoke English for about 24 hours and I just felt like so alone everyone was speaking a different language and there's a lot of Chinese people here a lot of Chinese girls and they all kept trying to talk to me but I was like oh I only speak English and they were like oh you looked like you might have spoke Chinese and so I was like are there any English speaking people even in my training at all and then I, found, I met like a bunch of really awesome people and there are a lot of English speakers from all over the world and then I also cried today after the orientation because I was just feeling really grateful to be where I am just seeing my whole life as a story that has unfolded and how my character as he told me has changed and grown so much and just like feeling overwhelmingly grateful Hi guys! I just woke up. This is what I look like right when I wake up. Actually, I woke up at like 1.30 and then I woke up at 5.30 and it's now 6.09. This is second day hair. I'm about to just rinse off and get dressed and um, have my outfit. I always love picking out my outfit before the shower and I'm just being a little bit quiet because these walls are paper thin and I don't want to wake anyone up. But I had some crazy dreams. Oh my god, this is too long of a story. I'm not gonna share it right now because <laughs> that will take like 20 minutes. Also, I just put some tea tree oil on a zit that I feel is appearing. I haven't had a zit in so long, um, like an under the skin, like big zit. So I just put some tea tree oil on it to dry it. And um, I've just been using aloe vera to help with scars. They're fading and yeah, I wash my face at night with neem face wash and then in the morning I don't really touch it. I'll rinse it with water maybe, but otherwise I leave it be to absorb everything from the night and also I'm going to sweat so I'll wash it again like halfway through the day after I've done like several little yoga practices because otherwise I'm just sweating through everything I put on my face so... That's my routine here, but normally I do wash day and night. I don't get how people brush their teeth and don't get toothpaste like all over their lips. Like they just keep it really clean, but like I'd be getting toothpaste all over my mouth when I brush my teeth. Like. So I've been dancing every morning. I listen to some songs on my Spotify downloaded playlist and I love it because it makes me so happy. Like it puts me in such a good mood to move and groove and dance and flow. So many thumbs up. I feel like this is my default state when I'm just awkward. I'm just like, yeah. Um, but there's no drinking water while doing the Ashtanga series. So I just drank a bunch of water and then I'm gonna pee and I'm gonna head up to the yoga shala and do the practice for an hour and a half, and um, I won't be able to film any of that, so I'll see you after. practice we did the primary series which we do every day that shit is tough really have to be present while you're doing it and 
pushes your body in just a wonderful way. I'm beginning to really sink into it, although it does still feel like kind of a workout, which I'm not used to in yoga, but it's deep. I'm, I'm seeing the meditative aspect of like the more fast paced asana, but yeah. I'm still kind of high from doing that. And now I'm eating ginger, flaxseed, almond, sunflower seed, sesame seed, raisin, amaranth, vanilla, cookies. <laughs> When I come back next time, I will. Hey, <laughs> it is another lunch break, and I had an amazing practice this morning. It's day two of my period. I think I used like four of those Thanks underwear in one day because I was so paranoid about leaking. Because it's happened almost every time I have my period, I leak and destroy something, and it's so annoying. So I changed my underwear four times to collect blood, and. Day two is a lot easier, but I have them drying. But yeah, every time I have used these underwear, I've had an accident. I never know how often I'm going to need to change them, so that's a thing. But yeah, I feel strong. Like, let's just do like a, a body check-in. I just ate lunch. Also, okay, the whole reason that I wanted to start filming was to talk about how the food here it's really good. It's mostly all vegan, um, except there's oatmeal and some things with milk sometimes. And it's kind of buffet style. So you just get however much you want. For me, I've always struggled with binge eating. And so for the first few days, I was eating way more than I needed to, especially because I had never done Ashtanga before. And I felt like I needed to eat more than I actually did. And um, I was also told that like the first three months that you start doing Ashtanga, you'll get like weird changes in, in your body. You'll have like either weird desires or your appetite will increase or decrease or you'll be having weird ass dreams. Like for some reason, the first three months that you do Ashtanga, you'll feel something change. Like either really sleepy, really tired. For me, I'm really energetic and I've been realizing I really don't need to eat a lot. And so I've just been, putting food on my plate and not getting seconds because the whole first week I was getting seconds and like even thirds and just like feeling so full after and feeling gross. And so now I feel good after I eat lunch and not like, <sighs> but yeah, it was just weird. I was like, why do I keep doing this to myself? Every time that I eat food, I don't have to feel this way. I cannot eat chickpeas anymore. And as a vegan, I use uh, beans. I was gonna say frijoles, <laughs> which is like Spanish for beans as my main source of protein and I love chickpeas. I've always, always eaten chickpeas. If you're a friend of mine, you know, baked chickpeas have been my shit for like three years. That's one of my favorite snacks. Put a little curry powder, garlic powder on it. It's, but lately I can't digest them. Like for some reason, every time I eat chickpeas now, I get so bloated and I think it's cause they have like a lot of heat. Someone said that, Ayurvedically, they they generate like a lot of heat in the body or something like that and um, It takes a lot to digest them and break them down and so I can't eat them anymore And two days here they had something with chickpeas and I ate the chickpeas both days because every time I see chickpeas I'm like, hmm, let me just give it another try and see if my body likes them now and it made me so gassy so bloated and like I don't know, not like hormonal, but like anxious or feeling unstable or sad or something. And that was the day that um, one of the guys here was like picking on me and telling me to go to not practice with him. And I was getting like sad and emotional. And it was, I literally ate chickpeas that day and the next day. And I got into an argument with my boyfriend that was all just me. And I was like, why am I eat? Where is this energy even coming from? and my digestion was bad and my mood was off. And I feel like we forget how interconnected what we eat is and how we feel is along with our thoughts and how our body feels. So everything is intricately connected. If you have turmoil in your mind, you're most likely going to have turmoil somewhere in your body. And same thing, if you eat really shitty food, it's gonna make your mind feel shitty also because it's causing, I wanna say tumultuous, <laughs> tumultuous energy within your body um, 
and everything is connected so i just wanted to share that little fable <laughs> of see how foods make you feel man i've been seeing such a correlation since i've really been cracking down on what i shouldn't be eating and what i should be eating even like bread i don't generally like bread that much but i've been eating it because it fills me up and lately when i see it i like don't have an appetite for it but once again the first week that i was here i was eating bread every day and i started to get tiny little pimples just like around here which my skin hasn't been really pimply so i was like it must be something in my diet and i stopped eating bread and the pimples started to go away <laughs> basically just feeling like mindfulness and meditation can be a part of every single area of your life not just when you're taking the 10 minutes a day that you do to focus on your breath it can be in any part of your day mindfulness and meditation can be 24 7 so i just wanted to share that and i've been really moving into that space especially being in a whole new part of the world that i've never been in doing a whole new yoga practice having to learn so much stuff and i'm literally i have to teach ashtanga today <laughs> and i there's like so many adjustments that i have to memorize and it's a lot to learn how to truly hold space for people and instead of getting stressed or feeling like i can't do it i've just been trying to be as present as possible and keep remembering that i asked for this experience and that every part of this experience is helping me grow and that i can be happy in this moment you know <laughs> I feel like partially like I'm in high school, like I have so much stuff to study and memorize and plan for and speaking in front of the class. And then it's just like, but I can still enjoy this moment, even though I got a lot to do. Uh, let's see how my arms have grown. Also my boobs, I swear they keep getting bigger. Every time I have my period, as you guys know, they get swollen, like swollen grapes that feel like they're about to pop. And then usually they go down, but lately they, they don't go down. <laughs> like usually they get so big and swollen and then they go back to normal. But lately they have been leaving a little bit of extra juice in them. And so I feel like they're getting bigger. But anyways, these are my arms. Let me flex. Oh my God, I feel like they look so big. I like that you can see the bicep and the tricep muscle. Low key, it's very low key. <laughs> no, it's closed. Oh, oh, yeah. <laughs> Oh, 
Coconut chai. Yummy. I'm back in New York. I'm back in the United States. I've been back since March 1st, but I have been doing a lot of other stuff. <laughs> um, moving, filming for the app, Hitomi Now app, which is my app that I created and have been working on the past few months since September. And I'm currently in a sublet uh, with so many wonderful plant babies. I have returned from India and it was such an amazing trip that I will not try and put it into words. Just the energy, the feeling. I'm sure you can get some of it from the random footage that I got. But it was just one of the best trips of my life. And it was mostly the inner journey because as much as I was exploring, I only explored Rishikesh, first of all. Um, I was meditating so much. I was going through my own process inside and looking inward at my internal landscape and it wasn't even so much necessarily about India. The point of the trip was to give myself this training and that was just so fruitful and I'm realizing that so many of the lessons from my training are truly sinking in now. A lot of people told me that would happen, that like the lessons from India will keep like rippling out and you will feel them come up in your day-to-day -day life. I actually taught a Hatha class already when I got back and I made a grown man cry. Like I, <laughs> I don't know why, I know that's weird to be proud of, to make someone cry, but they were crying out of release and I obviously have so much healing of the masculine that I have done in my life that like seeing a man who's older than me cry and just really say that he felt my words was an amazing thing. I don't really think I've ever seen a man cry, like a grown man cry. So I don't know, that was a big deal. <laughs> and uh, it felt good to teach Hatha. And I love kind of like stringing poetry along into my classes. So yeah, that was a really good moment. And I'm hoping to teach more in New York and find my right studio and my right space but anyways i'm going to go because i have a bunch of other things to work on i love you guys so much and i'm so grateful that you care to view my journey and to absorb any part of it even if you're gonna hate on me like happy hating thanks for tuning in and even if you don't like me i'm sure that one or two things that i've said will be absorbed and maybe something will stick or not. I love you guys so much and um, thank you. Just thank you for being on your own journeys and for witnessing yourselves. It can be rough, it can be scary, but you're not alone and there's so much potential to grow, to create, to heal and to expand. And I am just so here for all of those things, so. Thank you from the bottom of my heart, and I hope to see you in a video soon. I'm back on the YouTube game. From now on, there will be at least one video a week. I'm pre-filming. I'm filming every day. I got my camera right here, which I should be filming on. Uh, but yeah, I'll see you guys soon. Bye! Have an amazing day!